Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning service at the Journey Within Spiritualist Church. I'm Minister Bonnie, and thank you for joining us today. We are so grateful to have you with us this morning to help celebrate the Sunday, the day, and our service. Uh, with us today is esteemed medium, Minister Laura Wooster. Laura Wooster is an intuitive medium, teacher, and host of the Intuitive Life on Mind, Body, Spirit. Laura is a spiritualist minister ordained by the Journey Within Spiritualist Church. Um, she is also a certified medium with the Forever Family Foundation. And as I personally know Laura, I can say she's an excellent medium. We begin our services with spiritual healing. Spiritual healing when done in person is a laying on of hands in prayer to always be used in conjunction with, not instead of medical practice or advice. Since we are meeting now virtually, our healers that are present will be sending healing to all of you here and to those we are requesting prayers for. We are so grateful for all of our healers who dedicate their time, their love, and their energy to healing not just themselves, but for all of us and for everyone you put your names in the chat box for. If you would like to request healing for somebody, please put their first name and last initial in the chat box. It could be a person, a family in general, or a worldwide situation, or any living being. We will open our service with prayer, followed by a period of quiet meditation. If you would like to participate in the healing, please quiet yourself, focus on your breathing as you inhale and exhale, and feel yourself boosting your own immune system, igniting the inner healer within. I would like to say this prayer as a poem today because two years ago on July 27th was when our, our dear and most loved minister Janet Nohavik passed away and moved on to the spirit world. And I know for myself and most of us, we continue to feel her presence and her love and we are so grateful for all that she has done for all of us. So I'd like to begin by reading a prayer by St. Therese that Janet so much connected to and prayed to and was part of her life. So I will read this poem as a prayer. Saint Therese, may today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that you are born, that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. And with that, once again, I send all my love and thanks and gratitude to Reverend Janet Nohavik, and I am sure her presence is with us today. And with that, I ask everyone to please close your eyes and begin to breathe in and out and trusting in the love and power of God. I will put some music on and please connect. And I invite you before you open your eyes to touch your heart and come into a feeling of gratitude towards the ability to come together today, towards the spirit world, and towards the divine itself, which gives us love and life at all moments. Amen. Throughout the week, we will continue to be sending healing for everyone whose name is on the list um, and for everyone present today. It is now my honor to invite Laura to say our opening prayer. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you everyone for being here this morning. Good morning. As we pause this morning together in grace and gratitude, we open our hearts and minds to the infinite spirit that connects us all. May the energy of love and compassion that we all bring to this gathering multiply and expand and touch every soul in need, bringing peace to our hearts and clarity to our minds. We ask the great spirit and ministry of angels 
Help us to grow in the awareness of your presence, guidance, and support, and surround each soul with your infinite love and guiding light. Amen. It is now my pleasure to invite Minister Laura to do the homily for this morning. Thank you, Bonnie, and good morning again, everybody. Um, as I was considering what I might talk about today, um, I, well, let me preface it by saying I, I really, I love to listen to biographies um, of people, especially people who haven't shared the same experiences I've had in life. Um, and I love to hear people's stories, you know, even the short stories of biographies and things. It keeps me humble. <laughs> it reminds me that I don't know everything and um, life still has a lot lot to offer and a lot a lot to learn through life as well. But I was listening to this um, a gentleman the other day tell a story about um, when he was a child. He was, I think he was, said he was in third or fourth grade or something. And he happened to be in the play yard with someone who, of the same age, another boy, um, who had a very different life experience. He was, had different um, circumstances that he was living in than he was. And at one point, he he said he he'll never forget it. There was one point he he was looking at this boy's eyes, this boy that was the same age as him, and he saw himself in the boy's eyes, and it stuck with him even as a fourth grader. That you know, even though our life circumstances can be very different with others in life, that we're very much part of the same soul or the same. Can we all come from spirit? That. It's just a matter of circumstance and chance sometimes it seems that we have we live different lives and so it brought to mind especially in the light of juneteenth this week and anybody who's in the states understands what juneteenth is um we had a holiday on wednesday um, um it brought to mind a, a an incident of many years ago when i was a young adult um, that i experienced that really cemented for me in my mind how we can be walking the same earth and have a very different experience than the people that are standing next to us. And um, so the, the, the backstory here is that, um, you know, I, I was born in Massachusetts. I've lived here all my life and I've, I've never lived anywhere else. Uh, but I had an aunt who was an amateur um, genealogist and dug into our family history in a big way and so she had books and books and pages and just incredible history um, going back centuries um, about our family and there was some family history that came up that um, there was my third great grandfather um, was the governor of, a, of another state and and it come to find out the um, a state that he lived in still existed. And I, and I was a young adult and I wanted to see this place, you know, just for the you know, perspective of family and just to see what this all about. And I heard the stories of my, my grandmother's grandmother, you know, had a bedroom there. And it just, just for the sake of history and perspective, I wanted to go see this place. So I went and beautiful place, you know, renovated, um, my great, great, great grandfather's portraits on the wall. And, and, you know, I think the bedroom that allegedly was one of my, my grandmother's grandmother used to sleep there. Beautiful place. And the grounds, walking around the grounds and, you know, it's owned by the, the state service or the, um, the National Park Service or something. So there was a park service person walking around. And I, I remember as a young adult walking up and, and, and saying to this person, I asked him, you know, I, this is beautiful, but there were a lot of other people who used to live here. There, you know, there was 178 enslaved people on this property. I said, where did they live? And there wasn't a representation there of the of all these people who lived there for probably, I believe, a couple of centuries and worked there and lived there and had families there and and had unspeakable things happen and. I think there was like one small shack with a very faded sign that I couldn't even read to mark where they where one family probably probably lived and it really touched me and it really it, something that I was already aware of at that time but it really cemented to me that someone else who could have a very similar history where their family lived on this property could come and 
walk through those same paths and the same places and have a very different experience and not see themselves represented there. My family is represented there, but theirs wasn't. Their family, their history is, is probably wiped clean. They're just a, not even a name, most likely. And so this is something that really has always stuck with me. That almost every day in my life, I, I say, you know, we may be walking into the same rooms and sharing the same spaces, but we may be having very different experiences from the people who share that space with us. Um, whatever circumstances and whatever background and um, that they come from. But so the one thing that, um, so the one thing that it's really, I've noted recently is that, you know, we all, there's a lot of people really struggling right now. And we've all had struggles in life, humanity in general, we've always had struggles, but it just seems like there's so much more lately. I don't know if we're just more aware of it. Um, there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of people struggling with their, their depression and things like that. And, and, um, just trying to get through the day. And so this is something that I, that I take into my day every, you know, every time I, I interact with people, at least I try to, is that I may be having a great day, but the person I just interacted with at the grocery store or at the bank or wherever, you know, whatever life circumstances bring up that their, their circumstances, it might be bright and sunny for me, but they may be having a very different experience of what's happening in their life. And the one thing that, um, you know, the, if we, if we could just remember that all the time, that we, and people that we are meeting, we have, we have the power, we have the power to make a difference. Um, not too long, a couple of weeks ago, I, I I crossed paths with someone who I hadn't seen in a while, and they happened to mention to me. She goes, "I was so, you know, the last time I saw you, you said something to me, and it it really shifted my my perspective in my day. And I honestly, I couldn't remember what I said. I don't remember what the circumstances were, but it really, again, it cemented to me that that we have the power every day to to recognize and see people." and to shift their perspective of their day and to, we may not know what's going on in their life. We may not know what their, their um, experience in life has been and how they may see things differently and how, um, where we might um, feel like everything's wonderful and they're going, they're having the worst day of their life and we don't even know it. So to remember that as we go, we have, we have the chance, we have the choice every day to see people, for, to see what their perspective may be in life, to try to understand that. There's a lot of people who are really scared right now because their their beliefs in what they believe to be entirely true are being challenged. And um, it's scary. And they may, they may react in ways that we, we don't understand, especially as spiritualists. Um, we tend, we, you know, spiritualists as a whole, we are people who, at least most of the time um, are in, you know, we, we're all about social justice. I mean, we're rooted in social justice. So the suffragette movement was, you know, we were a big part of that the, as a movement, the spiritualist um, movement. So social, social justice is a big thing, but for some people that's, it's, it's something that they're just not comfortable with and they're very um, scared um, of a world that they don't recognize that's coming to the surface now. Uh, a, a, a world that is more inclusive, more recognition of people's experiences, that we all don't come from the same backgrounds. We don't all come from the same experiences. All the um, and, and what may seem very small to us or insignificant is really big to them. Whether we recognize you know, their pronoun of choice, whether we recognize that they may have come from a very different background and they don't have the equity that we have um and also you know just just a day-to-day -day basis here you don't know if someone just lost a loved one and they're just trying to get through the day um that you know they're struggling with their own perception of themselves and they're struggling to to keep um 
to keep their head above water. Or maybe they're trying to support someone else in their life that they're trying to keep their head above water. And they may be a bit short with us, you know, or, or they may not seem so happy or like, hey, put a smile on your face. Not everybody can do that. And I think if we can, you know, remember that as we go into the world every single day, that we have a chance every moment to, to lift someone up and to recognize like, okay, I'm not going to respond to this. <laughs> I'm not going to, I, perhaps there's something else going on here that there's there's fear behind this or there's struggle um and just where where can we offer something positive to them um and maybe you're the only person who who could do that for them um the you know there was something i i saw the other day on social media and you know social media does have its positive positive things and it was a reminder that uh, many people are hanging by the very thinnest of threads, and if you treat them well, then you may be the one person that does that all day, and it may make the hugest difference. You may never know it, but you, you know, you, and just, just always remember that. And there's a, there's a quote by Brian Weiss, Dr. Brian Weiss. He says, for truly we are all angels, temporarily hiding as humans. As as Mavis Patillo would say, we're all droplets of God, right? Spirit. Um, with the, the power of spirit, the strength of spirit is, is available to us all. And sometimes we're the ones who need to, to bring that through for others, to show that, to reflect that to other people, and to remind them of their own power, of their own spirit, their own soul, and that today is one day and tomorrow is another. And that um, what may be true today um, may be better tomorrow. So um, so I just I just wanted to invite you all to think about that. Like, I think sometimes we feel powerless, uh, especially with all the things going on in the world today. Um, there's so many things that I see, you know, in the, in the media, and I wonder, how can I possibly affect change here? I, I, it's, it's, it feel, I feel very powerless. Um, and of course, we can pick up the phone, write letters, emails, things like that. And, and that's something definitely that I'll be doing this year. Um, but but also remember we have the power in every moment when we walk out the door. Um, there was a gentleman that I was listening to on a podcast or something, and he had the experience of having uh, Mother Teresa around him when he was growing up, and, and as, as a schoolboy. And the one thing that um, she he said that she would always say like small sentences like "Do better," um, "Do good." Um, walk out the door and help somebody just very simple and that's that's just the one thing if we can just remember that we just sometimes we overcomplicate things I mean we think we have to save the world we think we have to go move mountains and it seems impossible but maybe to keep in mind that one thing go out and do the do the good in the world that that you can do and just trust and know that somehow that influence will will ripple through to other people as well but um, I'm going to leave you with one poem by John O'Donohue. May your soul find the graciousness to rise above the fester of small mediocrities. May your power never become a shell, wherein your heart would silently atrophy. May you welcome your own vulnerability as the ground where healing and truth join. May integrity of soul be your first ideal and the source that will guide and bless your work. So you have the hands of spirit. We are the hands of spirit. Our hearts are the hands of are the heart of spirit. Where can you bring that into the world every single day? Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. I know a lot of a lot of us show up here every week hoping for, for a little bit of hope and, and, and reflection of what's good in the world and what's possible. And a reflection of spirit and 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 um, the power of spirit and and thank you for all for being here and thank you for all for being the hands and heart of spirit and as you go out into the world this week blessings thank you thank you so much Laura that was really beautiful and the importance of remembering to be kind is something you know it's very simple but something so powerful and right now there's you know, almost a hundred attendees. So if everyone today, just today did an act of kindness, that's a lot of kindness. 
And so a lot of times when we receive kindness, we're inspired to be kind to somebody else and it just goes and goes. So thank you. Um, and now is time for our announcements uh, in our collections. So there is a scan box if you would like to donate something. Um, you could also send in a check or pay on, online through PayPal at the Journey Within website. And we say, Divine Loving Spirit, you have blessed us with this beautiful spiritualist community, which is the Journey Within. We ask you to bring us the means to keep it alive and thriving. We give thanks for all the gifts, great and small, that we receive. Amen. There is another scan box, scan box as well for those that would like to become members of our center. And we invite you to all of our other services and thank all of our volunteers at this time, especially Reverend Karen, Reverend Patty, who work tireless 24 seven to keep the church running. Um, so I'm gonna make some announcements for the next coming months, if you would like to join any of the classes. The first and third Wednesdays of the month, there's a community meditation with Eugenia Bushman. On June 24th, tomorrow, there's Activating a Self-Healing Practice Series with Judith Seaman. On 26th, Laurel will be, will be teaching online Introduction to Mediumship. June 29th, Pandora's Box, Opening the Lid to Your Mediumship with Mitch and Catherine Shirley. July 11th, How to Create the Life You Want with Shari Dworkin Smith. July 12th, Cycles of Change with Christine Morgan, July 13th, Exploring Your Evidential Toolkit with Connie Fusella, July 20th, Life After Loss, Catherine and Mitch Shirley, July 24th, Conversations with Spirit with Laura Wooster, and July 27th, Understanding the Medium's Mind with Pastor Joe. Those are all online. In person at the Journey Within, the first and third Sundays of each month, there's a mediumship development class for people of all levels at 12 p.m. with Reverend Joe and guest tutors. June 23rd, there's a meeting if anyone would like to become a moderator, in-person service. Um, July 14th, there's a World's Meet, a demonstration of mediumship at the Journey Within. August 9th through 11th, there's a spirit pl platform demonstration workshop with Pamela Meredith and Dawn Pfeiffer. September 5th, there's a demonstration of mediumship with John Holland and Joseph Shield. And the 6th and the 7th, John Holland and Joseph Shield will be teaching a workshop together. Um, we now come time for our demonstration of mediumship. As everyone knows, as a spiritual church, spiritualist church, we believe that life is continuous. And through our demonstration of mediumship, we seek to reunite those here with those that have crossed over. Um, I see someone already raised their hand, but I would like you to raise your hand if you are new to our service, if this is your first time attending this Sunday morning service. I see Sue already raised her hand just to show it works, um, but I don't see anyone. Oh, Kerry. Well, welcome to our service. We're so glad that you are here. Um, as we always say, if you could take 90 to 100% of the evidence, please raise your hand and the medium will decide who she is with. And as she goes on, if you can no longer take what she says, you could put your hand down and that will help her to get quickly to the right person. Um, and I must say as well, if you could take most of what she said, maybe one piece or two pieces, you could still raise your hand because sometimes the right person is just doubting because of one little thing they couldn't take, but they could take everything else. Um, so I will play, play a piece of music, which will be followed by our message prayer, and then we will do our demonstration. Please join me in the reciting of our message prayer. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there, I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken with morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. 
I did not die. I would now like our guest today, Minister Laura, to begin the demonstration of medium. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Um, I, I have a, a, an awareness of, of a woman here. She she doesn't feel very tall. She feels like, um, gosh, she, she feels sh shorter than me. <laughs> so she might be around five feet, maybe. There's a very, very petite woman, very tiny, very tiny. And um, I just I had this weird, really, really in, in strange impression of her. And I and I just have to say it exactly how I felt it. So I'm hoping it makes sense to somebody. But there's I don't know if she had this really particular thing about having her hair cut short. And if it got just a little like like even just a quarter of an inch too long, it would drive her crazy. And she'd have someone cut it for her or something. I just got that sense that she wanted to cut my hair really short because this was something she was very particular about. Um, is it just kept coming in? Um, I, I, I get the sense that she may not be, I don't think she's someone's mother. I believe, I feel like there's someone who is more to the side of someone here. So that would be more contemporary to the, to the person this message is for. It could be a close friend or a sister or some, or a cousin or somebody who was really close to the person that be, would be receiving this message. Um, I know that there may have been, um, a couple of things that she was dealing with health wise that wasn't necessarily um, um, dangerous or something that was of concern to her. Um, I know she had a couple of things she was dealing with, but what actually took her across feels more sudden. It feels like a sudden onset, um, possibly a, a cardiac situation. So I know that this may have been a day or two, if not, not much longer than that, where there was an awareness of this um, experience. Um, it feels cardiac situation here. Um, there, the, the, the name Paul or Paulette or Paula or something may be around her. It doesn't have to be her name. It could be someone associated with her in some way. Um, but I, I know I'm feeling the cardiac situation here. Um, and I, and I, I don't get the sense this is someone's, I think someone may think it's their mother, but I, unless this is a close aunt who was like a really close friend, I can kind of take that. It would have to be someone more friend-like to me or someone more to the side. Um, does anybody understand? So we have Charmaine. Okay. And we'll see how, we'll hear the sound of your voice and we'll see how this goes. Hi, Charmaine. Hi, Laura. Um, my uh, godmother and aunt uh, Pauline, she was barely five feet tall. She always wore her hair short. Um, we were very close. Um, growing up, she was like my second mother. She did a lot of things with me. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. So I, I had a feeling that you might have an awareness of a sense of, of mother, but not mother. So that would make sense. And you understand this, that this would drive her a little crazy if it got a little too long. Yes. Like, very okay. much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, just, it, was, it was like, I kept going like this. And I'm like, I could feel like I wanted to just scratch the back of my neck and say, someone cut this for me. Um, so, um, as she comes in here, I do, I do feel like she has a little bit of a sense of humor. You understand that with your godmother. Yeah. Yes, very much. And and, um, and sometimes I, I feel like it might might skirt the edge of, I, I wouldn't say disrespectful, it's not where I'm going here at all, but she might just push the envelope just a tiny bit. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but she never quite got, actually crossed the line, although some people might have thought she did. Right. Um, but I, I just know, um, and let me just see where she's going here. Um, hmm. All right. And I know as I sit with her here, I know that we are, um, I know the month of May is significant in some way because she's making that very obvious to me. She keeps wanting to back me up into the month of May. So I know there's a connection there that she wants to acknowledge. Do you understand that as well? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Okay. And also, and also she's moving me forward until right around now as well. So around the 21st, 23rd, somewhere around there, um, there's going to be some significance in the month of June. That's mm -hmm. you understand that too? Yes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and so um let me just see here. It's strange. Um, I'm I'm asking, like, did you do it? What did you do for work? Or all these things, but um, I don't know if she was a teacher or if she was in education, but I just feel like she had sort of that demeanor um in a way that she she just I feel like um what wherever whatever she did for work, if she worked at all, or, or wherever she did, I just feel like people gathering around her in some way. So I know that she may have um I don't think she went to be the center of attention, <laughs> but I feel like eventually she probably would be in wherever mm -hmm. she went. So that makes sense. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. So I just feel like it's just, um, I just feel people gathering around her. So interesting. I just feel like she has, I don't think she was in education, but I do feel like she, she taught people, but she didn't go out to teach people. It was just the way she was. She mm -hmm. taught me a lot of things that my mother didn't know about, like sewing and knitting. And I would go to her and I would learn all these things. She, she was a wealth of information. Right. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm getting chills. <laughs> this is definitely yeah. wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so I know as, as I, as, as she comes in here today, I know she sees you as a friend and I know that, you know, but you would, she, she's obviously a very motherly figure to you, but I just, she came through as a friend, almost like a sister kind of. Right. Like. Yeah. And, very um, much. And, um, and, and just know that she's coming in here to acknowledge, especially for whatever reason, I feel like this this time, this month is the reason why she's coming in right now as well. But I know mm -hmm. you both acknowledge that. Um, she's um, she's giving me my a symbolic thing here about lacing up my sneakers and getting going kind of thing. So there's something here that she wants to bring to you. Mm -hmm. um, she literally wants you to <laughs> lace up your sneakers and go. But it's more, again, it feels symbolic about you're ready for this. It's time to get moving. That, that's what I, I understand that totally. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And I just, there's so much love coming to you from her. And I know that you feel it from time to time when you think of her, mm -hmm. just know that when you have those moments, when you think of her and you feel her pull close, it definitely is her and your heart warms when you think of her. Cause you just know she's right there when this happens. You understand that as well? Yes. Uh, she did a lot of things for me in my life. Okay. I wouldn't be where I am today without her truthfully. Beautiful. So just know that she's um there's there's a little bit of humbleness here with her, although I do, I do think there's a little bit of like, yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing too. Yeah um, with her. Mm -hmm. Um, but just know that she just know she wants to validate this for you that when you feel her pull close, it's definitely her. Okay. Um the other thing too, all right. Um she wants to bring attention to a brother. And I'm trying to figure out if it's her brother or your brother, but my brother. Okay, and um it's and, my brother. And, okay, I'm sorry. My brother, I believe. Okay. And yeah. just know that um, she's she's putting a spotlight on him right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just know that she's um, wants to bring awareness to I'm not again, I'm not feeling if he's with her or here, but I just know that she just knows she wants to bring attention to him. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and to know that um, she's keeping an eye on him um, as things go here. Um, well, do you he's, on the, he's on the other side he's already. Other side. Yeah, he okay. is. All right. I apologize. I wasn't feeling him here or there. So I just know that he wants yeah. to pay attention to him. Um, and just know she's keeping an eye on him. There's something here as well. Do you understand James or Jim? No, I don't think so. I might be switching. Um, I definitely I clearly heard James or Jay. James. Maybe, maybe. Um, I, I, I know I just heard like what sounds like James to me, and I, I can't make it more than what it is. But mm -hmm. if if this has a close connection to your brother, I, I will take that. I don't want to make it fit, but, um, but if that makes sense, absolutely. Um, but just know that 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 your your godmother comes in here, and just know, um, I feel like the timing is perfect for you in the way that she comes it is. to yeah. And um, she was been waiting and holding back for a little while, she says, because you've been here before and you didn't, and it, she didn't come through then. And she was waiting for this time. <laughs> this is the first time she's come through to me ever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> she's, yeah. been I'm, she's been waiting. <laughs> I know she's a patient lady. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It just, I love how spirit brings through the evidence in that way too, that she has been very patient. That's wonderful that you validated that. Um, because she definitely has been waiting for the right moment. Um, already. So, um, okay. Anything else, anything else you want to, <laughs> um, and the last thing she wants to, I know that, um, there's a recognition here of you, um, being, being with her around the time of her passing. You understand that? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and she, and she said, and she's laughing when she says that she couldn't have done it without you. She said, <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a story behind that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. there it is. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I know it's a quick one, but, uh, but lots of love from, from your, from your, I God appreciate God. that so much, Laura. Thank you very, very much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Okay. So let me just see. Um, all right. So as I, as I move my awareness to our next communicator, um, 
I, I have, I feel I have a gentleman coming through. Um, he feels to me um, a bit broad shouldered. He, he feel like if you would hug him, he'd be like a teddy bear, like that. He has sort of that, that feel. Um, and I feel like if there's, there's a, either there was some experience with being a chef or cooking. Um, I mean, everybody cooks at some point, but no, there's a little bit more than that here. There's an awareness of what, how to use things, how to use, you know, I, I don't know. How, I don't know my way around the kitchen too well. <laughs> I feel like when he steps in closer, I feel like I can look at different things and I know what I'm going to do with it. Um, you know, whether it be a food or the utensils and things, I just know that I know what I'm doing um, when I step in um, to this gentleman's shoes here. And um, so I don't know if they did this for a living. Um, he may have considered it at one point. I don't get that sense, but I know that he he was known for this around his family. Um, I, um, I lose my voice there just a second. I know there may have something, been something respiratory -ish illness here with him. I feel like compromised lung condition in some way, respiratory thing. I just lost my breath for a second. So I know this was definitely something that um, was an issue. I don't know if this was long-term though. It may have been a short-term thing, perhaps COVID or something that suddenly came up for him. Um, but I know this was something that was, um, it kind of took him by surprise, um, the sense of, of respiratory distress here that I'm feeling with him. Um, I almost want to see someone's brother or or a close friend. I just feel brotherly with the the communicate or the, the 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 receiver of this message or someone who was very close to him. Um, because I feel him to the side of the person that this is meant for. I'm curious if the name James or Jim is significant with him in some way. Um, because that name came through and I didn't quite want to put put that with uh, my previous communicator here. And I see Annette raised her hand. Annette ha ha. Hi, Annette. Hello, Laura. James Hi. is my father. It James. was very sudden. Okay. It was, when you say respiratory, it was a lot of things that was a part of it. It was a part, it was when it's, when he passed and it was quick. Um, what else did you ask me? Um, those are things that hit me. I'm trying to remember the others, sorry. Oh, the, the awareness of knowing his way around the kitchen. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. We only <laughs> met when he cooked and he didn't have to be in the tavern. He did other jobs too, but by God, when he got in the kitchen, he could make anything and I can't cook. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> okay. Very similar to that back then. Okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. Well, it's interesting though. I wanted to, I, he said, you say he's your father, but, but I feel like he's coming through next to you, like energetically next to you. So um, that's very, it, so there's got to be a uniqueness to the, to the way that you communicated with your dad or the way that you um, interacted with your father. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, I mean, not that he doesn't feel fatherly, but he feels more like a friend to you. He was everything to me. Yes. Okay. I was the baby. I, I, I he took me everywhere uh, and the other kids couldn't go as well. So I was always kind of his sidekick. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. <I hope. laughs> All right, I'll take that. Normally, I wouldn't make a, di you know, the fatherly energy into something like that. But yeah, that I will take that, especially if this was a unique circumstance, um, being his sidekick. Okay, that makes sense. All righty. Um, and as he steps in here, I know that um, he would take himself sometimes a little too seriously, although he would be very light of touch with you. You understand that, yes? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yep. And, um, and, and I, and I feel like in, in probably in your adult years, you may have, um, looked and said, dad, will you just ease up on yourself? Cause I feel like he wouldn't take, he would take himself a little too seriously, or he would be a little too tough on himself where he would have, you know, the opposite for the, everybody else. He'd have more compassion for other people. And you would, you understand that with him as well. Absolutely. Okay. And he, and he's coming through and he wants, and, and, he, and he's acknowledging this in a very quiet way. And, and um, and he he wants to bring this through as as a message for you that there's an I hope I, I can say anything right <laughs> absolutely to me <laughs> sure you're among friends right <laughs> okay. exactly um, he's taking a little bit of this pill for you um, and handing it to you um, there's, so there's a recognition here of um, not that you take yourself too seriously that's what I'm saying here but just the compassion that you have for the, everybody around you for in the for the human experience of everybody around you is a little reflection of what we had talked about in the message here um and there's one thing i failed to mention in the message and i love that your father's bringing this through is that compassion that we go through each day 
we need to offer it to ourselves as well and we need to lighten up around our around our own situations and what you know our, and being too tough on ourselves can you embrace that from your dad i can laura i can okay. Beautiful. If you saw my face, you'd know who I am. And yeah, look and <laughs> wonderful. Oh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So he's he's bring and he's bringing this through with a lot, a lot of uh, emphasis. So I know this is something that most likely you've been dealing with in the past maybe few weeks or so, or it's been it's really come to to light in your mind and heart even more so in the last few weeks. So so, and I feel like he wants to bring that a forefront of your mind, um, that sense of of being being gentle with yourself all right and, and doing okay. doing what you did for him to do for yourself okay um um so i know this is your father i feel gosh um it's also it's interesting the name um i know that he's playing with the name um paul paulette or something from the previous connection here do you understand the connection with the name paul i was yes paul yes it is for me um uh, yes. i was just at a funeral and Paul is the brother. So yeah, okay. I get it. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love, love, love when they do this because it's like, um, not of playing off the previous message, but also, um, I always find when we, when they, when spirit brings through, brings through a message that they will often validate our, our current experiences so that we know for sure that this is what exactly what they meant. Right. So, so that was a recent experience for you to connect with Paul. So just know that, um, um, that also, I think this is his way of validating that he saw that you were, you were um, honoring somebody else in spirit as well. Um, okay, let me just see where else we're going here. Already. Hmm. What? Is there memories of him like making pancakes and stuff for you? Man, Laura, it was everything. I can't just pick one. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it's the pancakes I made and put them on the fire on the stove to warm up. You can't do that under the fire. I get it. Never mind. It okay. was... <laughs> <laughs> don't put a paper plate over fire i get it <laughs> oh, oh is yeah. this something that i mean does that make sense for like um something yep. that he may have seen from the spirit side is that what you're saying oh no no i was warming up pancakes and put a like five years old and put a paper plate over the fire so there you go you know <laughs> okay. it's warming that's up. the memory okay okay <laughs> all right i wasn't sure where we were going with that but i know yeah. i just felt i felt it was a memory but i wasn't sure but there was a, a specifically about pancakes here so wonderful. So just know he wanted to leave you with a laugh and just to remind you to to laugh every day and um and to and and always remember that um you I just feel like he loves you dearly. I keep hearing that he loves you dearly. And um is there a connection to the name um Daisy? Daisy? Um it's it's interesting you say Daisy. It's more the flower because the the brother the sister's name is Beth and between her and us yeah. is daisies between her and us is daisies that's all okay. it is okay I didn't know because I kept saying say daisy say daisy so I'm like okay so as long as it has some some meaning to you that's wonderful wonderful so just know I could go on for a long time with you <laughs> <laughs> be afraid <laughs> um but just know um uh, uh just know that he's um He's funny. He's, he's laughing. He's like, he's just know I'm always next to you, but not too close. <laughs> yep. I don't know. He's just got a funny sense of humor. I don't know what that means, but I'm just saying that. Um, all right. So let me just see anything else, but I'm going to, I'll leave you with his blessings. And I know this is your dad and just know that um, go easy on yourself. All right. Thank you much. Have a great day. Thank you, Thank you Annette. Bless you. Blessings. you're muted bonnie thank you so much annette and charmaine for um participating and those messages were lovely laura um so i would invite you now laura to uh, end our service with a closing prayer that will be followed by a piece of song and i thank you so much laura for your participation you. in this service it was very beautiful and thanks once again for everyone who attended today Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for your support today. And thank you, everybody, for being here. We give thanks for the love and presence of spirit today in this sacred gathering. May the light and love you show us continue to shine brightly within us, illuminating, illuminating our path and the paths of others we meet. As we go about our week, 
May we live each day in gratitude for all the gifts that life on this planet has to offer and hold within our hearts a sense of peace and connection, knowing that we are always surrounded by the divine presence and support of the spirit world. Divine Spirit, help us to be mindful of the lessons we have yet to learn and lead us to be the instruments of peace, reflecting light and compassion into the world wherever possible. We ask the Great Spirit and the Ministry of Angels to guide our hearts and minds so that every soul on this earth knows that they never walk this earth alone and are infinitely loved and supported. And so it is. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you once again for being here.